We're talking all things trolling from lead core to braid, rods and reels, flatline to planer boards, and everything in between. We have a variety of anglers with a wealth of trolling knowledge sharing their expertise to help you find and catch more fish with this style of fishing, as well as our current Fuzzbite reports from throughout the upper Midwest and some cool products for trolling and much more. This is Angling Buzz brought to you by Omnia Fishing, a smarter tackle shopping experience. Today's show is all about covering lots of water and catching lots of fish. Trolling is one technique that can be used for just about any freshwater game fish. We're talking a walleye, muskie, pike, trout, salmon, and even crappies and bluegill. And one aspect that is key is combining speed and lure depth. When you put those together, it's a surefire way to replicate the bite. We have Mike Hainer today sharing his insights into trolling. Now, Mike, you fished all over North America. What are some important aspects of trolling? Well, trolling is a really, really good way to find and catch fish. Got the big long rods out with the braid. It works all season, all open water season, and it's effective for a number of different species of fish. Look at that fatty. That is a fatty. The thing about trolling is there's a lot of anglers that are sort of intimidated by them. So the bottom line is trolling isn't nothing to be afraid of. Nice way to start. It's like you're covering a ton of water, and if you're using your graphs, you're finding bait fish, you're finding structure, you're doing two things at once. You're covering water to catch fish, but you're learning new water at the same time. So the cool thing about trolling too is it is fairly simple once you get dialed into it. And the equipment you need can be simple too. Like right now, I've got like probably the only rod you would need for trolling. It doesn't matter if you're lead core fishing, whether you're downrigger fishing, whether you're board fishing, or long line trolling. It's a St. Croix 8.6, Icon series, medium power, moderate action rod. It's good for just about any kind of trolling you want to do. When it comes to reels though, that's a different situation. It all depends on the line and the type of fishing you're going to be doing. Right now we're long line trolling for walleyes and I'm using um, a braided line, a suffix 832 braid and a 10 to 15 pound, which is good for doing this. And a good reel to put that on is this Daiwa Lexa 300, which is a line counter reel. Most anglers who troll use line counter reels and for the simple reason of replication. You want to get your lure back to the same depth you had it before when you caught a fish. So this reel has the three good qualities about it. A line counter, it's got a smooth drag, and it's got a clicker on it. So if you're going to set the rod in a rod holder, a fish grabs it, you can hear it going on. Fish, 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 fish. We, we got a double on there. On the other hand, if you want to try lead cord trolling, you're going to need a whole new reel setup for that. Lead core fishing is a great way to get small little crankbaits down to a greater depth. But the problem with it is the line is a heavier diameter than monofilament or braid. So you need a bigger capacity reel to hold that line. So right here I've got a Daiwa Sea Line 40. They make these up to the size 50 depending on how much lead core you really want to put on. But the average lead core troller will put on five colors of lead which will get you down 25, 30 feet. So, but this reel has all the same features as the Lexa we had before. A very great variable drag, a line clicker, and a line counter. So these three combinations will help you get baits down to the depth you want to get them at when you're trolling for walleyes over suspended water. Yes, having your gear balanced is so important. And Mike, could you go into detail when we're talking about replicating and fine-tuning depth and speed? Yeah, Troy, good trollers monitor their speed on their graph at all times. Speed is everything when you're trolling crankbaits. Um, it totally affects the action and the depth of a bait. To get the most out of a lure, you have to be running it at the right speed. Some guys even have uh, kicker motors on the backs of their boats, the guys that troll a lot. In a kicker motor, you can really fine tune the speed you're going to get the best right action there. out of I your lure. On. It goes to show you the effectiveness of lead core trolling. And last but not least, there's a cool trolling app by Precision Trolling that tells you the depth of your lure based on how much line you have out. So all in all, trolling is an effective way to cover lots of water, find and catch fish, and it's really not as intimidating as you think. Yes, there's so many applications for trolling for so many different kinds of fish. Well, thank you, Mike, for your insight and time. Right now, it's time for our Timely Topics feature, and up first is multi-species guide Tony Roach sharing his favorite bait for flatline trolling. 
For me, it's pretty simple. It would be a shad wrap. You know, when shad wraps are an effective bait for good reason, they've been around for a long time. You know, shad wraps are one of those baits that you can fish a lot of different ways, whether you like casting, whether you like trolling, equally effective anywhere you go. For me, when it comes to casting, I love casting shad wraps up onto windblown points when the wind's really cranking in there, those bait fish are confused and the walleyes are feeding. Also, when you get into current areas, you're pitching it up into that slack water or walleyes or ambush predators, so they'll be set up on a, let's say like a, a wing dam or something and you're throwing up on that bait and getting a deflection bite with a shad wrap, effective in a lot of different situations. Today we're doing a little flat line trolling with shads. We're varying our depths. We're going up into six, seven feet of water and then dipping back out into this 14 foot, adding a lot of different turns, varying my speeds. The nice thing about shad wraps is they run absolutely true. So as I get into summer and I start increasing my speed, you know those baits are gonna run true the entire time. Now, shad wraps have been around for a long time. In the 80s when they were in short supply, Places like Lake Mille Lacs, bait shops used to rent them out for 25 bucks a day. That's not the case anymore. Shad wraps are readily available at your local retailer, but for good reason, you see that wide, big, huge shelf of shad wraps because they work. There's a lot of different colors, so whether you're fishing stained water, clear water, high sun, low sun, spring, summer, fall, shad wraps are simply amazing. They catch fish anywhere. A $25 to rent a shad wrap, that's crazy, but they are incredibly effective. And up next is Captain Jared Houston sharing some trolling tips with spinners. Oh, there that's you. a musky. Look at that. I think it might be a little it, musky. It looks like a musky. Yeah. Oh, we'll see. It, it is a musky. Cool. Yeah. Ready? Lay it right on the floor. Hey, fun. All right. Way to go. One, two, three. Let her go. Nice release. <laughs> Bye, buddy. It's kind of cool. Hey, muskies are cool, man. We're trolling some good wind off the northeast, off Lake Superior. It's kind of a multitask deal. You got to stay on that electric trolling motor so you're pointing in the right direction. We're going to run through my system a little bit on how to catch these. It's real plumpy fish for sure. They're post spawn, of course, and they're just putting on the feed bag and they're heading their way back out to Lake Superior. So we're kind of fishing the lower sections and uh, what we're doing is we're doing some trolling. We're in the back bay of the St. Louis River and we're doing a, a combination of crankbaits and um, and worms. So we got some live bait on some and, and, and cranks and we've found a speed in a way that we can do both productive. Uh, you let out the shallow running crank so you got some short billed crankbaits so it doesn't have to dive deeper into the uh, bottom and then the worms are just right off the side. You know, you read all the charts about bottom bouncers in the system and what size you should use. I use a heavy bottom bouncer with my short leads and there's a lot of reasons for that for me. It's mostly because I'm fishing right off the side of the boat and to have that line have the 45 degrees from the top of the water to the top of the rod is important to me. So control, that helps me control with this weight. So heavy weights, short leads, bright colors, sharp hooks, collectively that's going to put more fish in the boat for you. Basically real shallow water, as you can see. Seven feet, five to seven feet, real milky chocolate stuff. St. Louis River's got a lot of northeast winds now, so it's kicking up a lot of silt, which is turning up the water, but some fat chunkers for sure. So, everybody's familiar with the uh, butterfly blades. Nice slow presentation with these, uh, down to about a quarter mile per hour, coming in a variety of colors. You know, everybody's on the live bait kick, and I'm no exception, but when the bite's so good that you're getting them all over the place, don't be afraid to use today's new eye candy, right? So I like to match up color selection. So this here is the pink silver. Obviously it's got a lot of similarities and a little accent to this. So we'll actually rig this baby onto here and uh, throw it out on one of the troll rods and um, it'll prove success. I mean, we got such a good bite going that you don't have to have night crawlers and obviously getting away without using live bait will save you some time, money, a mess, right? Cause this is gonna be a lot cleaner. But the, the strategy of using soft plastics works just as well in trolling applications. And so we'll rig this baby on there. Rig it just like a night crawler, right? Use both hooks. Make sure your sh hooks are sharp out of the box. Put her on there. And get her on the spin table. Put her in the water and let her rock. So there you go. That's going to catch some walleyes. Look out! So it's 
early June right now, so the water temperatures are still coming up to their summertime temps, and really got the fish super active. Obviously, post spawn stuff, so they're eating really well. Got another nice beauty here that we're uh, trolling, but I mean, they're they're really, really, really active, and they're coming in pods of about three or four at a time. I mean, you can see by the forward-facing technology as you go by them, and uh, every single fish is showing interest. Juicy. Wow, huh? Nicely done, All Jared. Right. Way to go, everybody. That is a hefty fish. Just juicy. I mean, obviously they're post-spawn. That happened quite a while ago. We're looking at water temperatures in the mid-60s right now. And this trolling bite's gonna last here for a little bit longer, and then it's gonna kind of change over. We're gonna do some different techniques to get them. But for right now, it's that short leads and they're really interested in the bottom bouncers more than the bait. And what they'll do is they'll tend to come up to the bottom bouncer, look at it, and they'll kind of drift back, and then they'll just strike that worm really good. So it's a lot of fun to watch and a lot of fun to tangle with it. So we'll let that baby go. Right out of the package, I'll take the, the bottom bouncer, three ounces as previously described. And you know, it comes standard like this. So it's got that uh, whatever degree angle, a little less than 45 degrees. I'll take that baby and I'll bend that up. So I want that to be a little bit more vertical. And the reason why is so that when this thing is tickling the bottom and moving along, I got a higher elevation with my uh, crawler harness or my butterfly blade, uh, rather than having it down here and uh, more apt to get snagged up or something. So I like to take it, bend it up straight out of the package. It's a wire, so it bends really easy. And you know, if you, get, if you can get away with it, you can bend it back, of course, so there's that too. So um, just a little tip and technique that I use and it works for me and it'll work for you. Give it a try. When it comes to trolling up in the upper Midwest, you know, walleye anglers, that's one of their favorite ways to catch them, and it is so effective. It's time for this week's Buzz Bite Reports. To kick it off, we're going to head to Michigan with Captain Ron Dome Jr. Right now, we're out on Lake Michigan this evening trolling kings and steelhead. The bite's been pretty good. It's in pockets right now. We've got a lot of cold water, but the fish are really moving up from the north and from the south as the water gets pushed around with these big winds we've had recently. The lake trout jigging is still fishing really good, typically depths of 70 to 100 on both the big lake and the Grand Traverse Bays. The smallmouth bass have kind of pulled out. They're not up on the flats anymore spawning. They're not really shallow post-spawn. They're out in that 15 to 35 foot zone. Fishing is really good, so be sure to get out and enjoy this awesome time of year and stay on the bite. Thanks, Ron. Now let's jump over to North Dakota with Jason Mitchell, who's at Devil's Lake. Overall, the fish remains pretty good. We've had some cold fronts and stuff go through. We've had some rain, but uh, goodness, we're catching a lot of, a lot of nice walleyes. And but live all full of walleyes here today. And what we've been doing is been running bottom bolsters and spinners or bottom bolsters and plain snails quite a bit. It's like these fish are starting to transition off of the weed lines, I would say. A depth where I've been finding a lot of fish who are, say, 7, 8 feet of water out to maybe 15, 16, 17 feet, depending on the day. But we've had stable weather, you know, sunshine and wind. I've been running a lot of spinner harnesses, either a half crawler or a eye candy paddle shad. Uh, some of the days after some of the fronts, I've been going to just a three-foot plain snell and a leech. Uh, some places I've been getting a lot of scum and weeds, slime on the bottom, or I've been using a floating jig head or a floating snell, you know, to get the leech up off the bottom. But... Uh, for sure, you know, we're starting to see these classic summer patterns and Devil's Lakes for fishing good. Thanks, Jason. Now let's head to the Alexandria area with Joe Segura. Well, it's been a busy week. I feel like we've caught just about every species in the lake, uh, catching a lot of walleye on that outside weed edge. We're trolling real fast along there with a, a crawler or a crankbait, as well as the basin. And the basin might be 25, 30 feet, 40 feet deep, but those fish will be suspended about 25 to 20 feet down. Um, so we're going to run our baits right through uh, where those walleyes are. And we've been catching a lot of fish that way, as well as the concentrated uh, fish in the weed still. So if you're going along the weed edge and you see a concentrated uh, group, slow down. Uh, throw a targeted uh, attack at them with a, like a jigging wrap or a jigging uh, plastic or uh, like a bobber and a leech. Bobber and a leech is a really good multi-species for a lot of people because you're going to get your walleye, you're going to get your sunfish, and you're going to get your bass. Um, there's a ton of big bluegills out there and uh, just try to be responsible. Keep the small, a little bit medium sized ones. They eat up great and let those bigger ones go. Thanks, Joe. Now let's head to Leech Lake with Toby Cavallibog. Sitting in the boat at uh, beautiful Trapper's Landing here on Leech Lake. And as you can see, I have my work cut out for me. Going through a lot of rods. Why? Because the walleye bite's pretty tough right now. The smallmouth are going, 
perch are biting, the pike are going, but the walleyes seem to be full of mayflies. They're pretty sassy. Got to go through a lot of fish, uh, a lot of different tactics. We've tried jig wraps, caught a few fish on them today. Swim baits, caught a few fish on them today. Bobbers, caught a few fish on them today, but nothing was great. Had to stick and move, stick and move, forward facing sonar, use the electronics. Fish seem to be everywhere where they should be. So I would definitely focus on the early morning, late in the afternoon, get out there, have fun, and enjoy Leech Lake. Thanks, Toby. Now let's head to Lake Vermilion with Billy Rosner and Jason Freed. We just caught this beautiful Lake Vermilion walleye. Middle of the day, they still bite. Billy's gonna go ahead and start giving you the report of what's happening up here. The walleye bite's really been holding its own up here, but we're starting to see a, a, a change you know, in the live bait. We've been catching them on bobbers and leeches and uh, minnows, but now, I mean, we're starting to really nail them on crawlers up here. So don't forget to put the crawlers in your boat. Yeah, big reason, mayfly hatch, right? Creature baits, night crawlers, leeches, whether it's bobbers, lindy rigs, jigs, it's all working right now. Just transition, we gotta figure out what works day to day. What about muskies? Yep, muskies too, you know, we're wrapping up our mayfly hatch, but they're still chasing them out on the main lake basins. Look on your finders, you find those nice balls on there, the mayfly larvae coming up. You're gonna see some hooks on there, they're gonna be tulipy or whitefish. And in those same areas, there's gonna be some nice muskies and some nice pike in there. And you can long line troll those area boards and uh, just open water, cast it, and you should have some musky action. And you've been, you've been chasing bass too. Yeah, smallmouth fishing, slide off the uh, break shoreline, get out six to 10 feet right now. And uh, right now, top waters, Ned rigs, tubes right there. Have a great week and be safe out there. Now it's time for our cool products brought to you by Omnia Fishing. We're gonna start out with the Clam Fortis TD260 net. Now this is made for big fish like pike, salmon, and catfish. It has a laser engraved ruler, military grade aluminum hoop. It features a quick release extension handle, which is really nice. The handle actually extends out to 94 inches. This gives you both reach and leverage for netting big fish. This is just an awesome net and very important when you are fishing for large fish like pike, salmon, and trout. The Clam Fortis TD260. And next from Northland Tackle, the Rumble Shad. This is a great little balsa bait, perfect for trolling. You could also cast this, but this size bait right here, this is the size five. This would be great for just flatline trolling. You could also use it on lead core, and it reaches depths from five to 12 feet. And for most of the lakes across the upper Midwest this time of year, this is perfect bass, you know, primarily walleye fishing, trout fishing, salmon fishing, nice bright colors, premium hooks on here, a great bait for trolling, the Rumble Shad from Northland Tackle. And next, Suffolk Performance Lead Core. Lead Core is designed for trolling. This has a 10 color sequence, 10 yards per color, and available in different sizes. This is 12 pound, which is great for all around trolling. Suffix Performance Lead Core. And next from Daiwa, the Sea Line Line Counter Reel. This specific model is the SL20 LC3B. This has a built in line counter with the reel, it's perfect for lead core. This features a rugged, corrosive proof graphite frame. It also features an automatic engaging clutch. The Sea Line SL20 LC3B from Daiwa. And lastly, from St. Croix, the Encore two-piece trolling rod. And this is designed for bigger fish like salmon and steelhead. And as you can see, it's in two pieces, and it's actually nine and a half feet long. It has an extra heavy power, moderate action. This is a very comfortable rod and features a protective rear bumper. Has a lot of backbone to set the hook on big fish when you are trolling, as well as enough flexibility through the moderate action to make sure your lures are running effectively. It does have a double locking system for your reel. You can see it right here, so you would lock your reel in place there and actually reinforce it down by twisting this as well. So this rod would pair great with this Daiwa Sea Line reel here and Suffolk's Performance Lead Core for an all around great trolling setup. You can shop online anytime at omniafishing.com. And up next, it's time for our technique of the week. As you can see, we're moving along this boulder ledge and look at right there, that's a muskie. Look at it, it's, it's a perfect uh, silhouette of the fish. You can see the, the fins right there. It's sitting right in like a little boulder slide right in the corner there. 
That's where we have our bait suckers hopefully sort of gliding over that spot. Pointer boards are a tool that we use when we're trolling to get baits away from the boat and cover larger areas of water. So we've got three boards on the boat here that we'll end up using for musky fishing, believe it or not, and of course for a lot of other applications. The board that I'm using right now, this is the smallest board we've got from offshore. This is generally used for crappie fishing, trolling little crankbaits or little spinners for trout, something like that. But with the sucker deal, it's just got the right buoyancy that I can almost use this as a bobber, but I can still pull that sucker out away from the boat a pretty short distance. Now the next size we've got, slightly bigger. This is the most common board used by, by walleye fishermen. It's also the board that Nick is using. can handle a, a little bit bigger, bigger bait. So that's the board that we're using to pull the sucker the farthest away from the boat. Now if we were out trolling crankbaits for muskies, this is, this is the board that we'd choose here. This is the mag planer. Having that option of the small, medium, and large is really effective for us depending on the conditions we're fishing, what baits we're fishing. We can match all of those to the boards and be successful on the water. If you've never tried using planer boards before, hopefully that'll help you find and catch more fish with this method. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, let us know down below in the comments. And we can help to avoid the spread of aquatic invasive species anytime you're leaving any body of water. Remember, clean, drain, dry. Well, thank you for watching, and here's another video from Angling Buzz.